Oscar Bevis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here today for a Skype interview with my man, Mr. O'Hara Davis. O'Hara, I know Umar spoke to you about two or three weeks ago, probably since then. Lockdown has, of course, been extended. I mean, what's going through your mind now? Um, what's going through my mind, first of all, is that I'm glad that I'm alive. You know what I mean, they got so many deaths, eight, nine hundred people dying every day. And, you know, I'm just thankful that I'm alive until now. And I hope that me and everyone else continues to live through this phase because it's a band what the world's going through right now. Yeah, I mean, it's just mental. You know, you could even comprehend this time last year that fast forward a year and we'd be in lockdown and, you know, boxing wouldn't even be relevant right now. But, uh, yeah, so what have you been doing then in lockdown to keep yourself busy? Are you a Netflix man? Uh, I take it you're not much of a book reader. You're probably smashing out some Call of Duty, am I right? Well, to be honest, I'm reading. I'm reading a Bible. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm reading a Bible. Cool. I'm using this time to try and learn about God. You know, I've always believed in God, so I'm using this time to try and learn about my faith. You know, you know. sometimes people say, oh, I haven't got time to learn about God because I'm too busy. But now, that excuse isn't valid. So I've just been using a lot, a lot of this time to read about God in, in the Bible um, I've been, um, I bought a little push bike. I've been, you know what I mean? I've been biking. Um, I've been doing 10, 15 miles on, a, on the bike because that's, really that's really good on the legs. I've been exercising. I've been taking my runs every morning. Then I come back home and um, I sit on the PS4 all day. So I don't really do much. I, I'm, I'm really doing that same ass routine every day. Every day, the same routine. I remember when I came to see you just after Christmas and you just recently linked up with Angel. One thing that stood out to me was you saying you'd found the right mindset. I mean, having hit that point where you feel like your mindset's in a perfect place, you're training well, and you're performing at the highest level of your career, how tough has it been that that routine has literally just been ripped away, you know, at the click of a finger? Being this, it has been ripped away a tiny bit, but me and Angel are still talking every day. You know, um, I've got access to a gym where I've got the gym key, so I'm the only one in the gym. You know, me and my brother, we go there. Uh, I get Angel on Skype, and as I'm hitting the bag, he advises me on what to, on what, on what shots to throw, where to move. Obviously, it'd be easier if he was there, but you know, once all this is done, I'll be back with him in the gym anyway. So I'm seeing this as a period of rest, and where I'm just be ticking over. I'm, I'm just ticking over. Um, I fought in February, so I fought not long before this lockdown. So um, I'm not itching to fight right now. Why? Because I only fought two months ago. So, um, you know, I was, um, I've, yeah, I've had it off because there's been many fighters that were meant to fight and they got cancelled because of the lockdown. So, they, so for one, they got plans. Like, they obviously, like, they haven't been paid. So they need to get paid and they're itching to fight. A lot of these guys haven't fought in a year, a year and a half. And um, they haven't been paid. And it's really sad to see. It was me. I'm one of the lucky ones because I fought not long before. Have you even given Tyrone McKenna a second thought? I mean, you say you're in the gym, scraping Angel, but I take it you're not working on tactics for the fight and more just the basics? Training. I'm just training, really. Uh, no, I haven't really thought about it. Now that you're saying that, I totally forgot who, who I'm even fighting against in my next fight. I mean, I'm sure Tyrone will absolutely love that. The fact that uh, he's not playing on your mind. But yeah, let's move on now to some Devin Haney comments. Um, sparked a massive row in the boxing community, especially on Twitter which we'll get into later, because um, you yourself did get involved. But yeah, his comments in which he said on a stream alongside his dad and a boxing reporter that he would uh, he'd never lose to a white boy. Well, let me show you what I think of, think of Devin first. And first of all, I, uh, I know Devin and his dad, Bill Haney. When me and Tunde out in the yard went out to the States all those years ago, we spent a lot of time with them. They like they took us back to their house and we, and we chilled out in the house. So I spent time with them personally for a couple of weeks and I can tell you they're not racist not one bit I've seen them treat black people the same way as they treat white people they have give they give to the black poor man and they give to the white poor man there was no discrim like like they don't literally like they don't discriminate anyone um the comment yeah was a you know it wasn't the right thing to say it was a ignorant comment it was an ignorant comment but then again you have to bear in mind that Devin Haney He's young. How old is he? 19, 20 years old? I think he's recently turned 21, so he's younger than me. 
Yeah, yeah, he's young. He's a kid still. He's a kid. And obviously, that comment, who said it first? Bernard Hopkins said it when he fought Joe Kawasaki. And that's what he said. And obviously, at that time, Devin Haney being a kid, even me being a kid, and we're looking up to this man, like Hopkins, he's a man. And he said this about, I'm never going to lose to someone, that's why. He said this, and being young, as you get older, you like they're still your idol, and you're trying to mimic them. So you copy how they act, you copy how they fight, you copy how they talk, you copy how they walk, you, you copy everything about them. The same way me as a kid coming up, I used to look up to Floyd. Every day I'd be saying, hard work, dedication, hard work, dedication, easy work, easy work. And that's what Floyd said. And now that I'm older, it's only now that I'm a lot older that I'm now coming away from that and I'm finding my own path. But Devin Haney being young, 20, 21 years old, he's still in that kid's mindset where he's still trying to mimic all of his idols. So it's not coming from a place where he means what he said. He's just copying what he, he, he just copying what he saw Hopkins say. The same way, if you look at him over Instagram, he's like he's like he always puts up pictures of him and Floyd, always comparing himself. Him and Floyd, him and Floyd, him and Floyd, him and Floyd holding money. Why? Because he looks up to Floyd, and to be like Floyd, you have to copy Floyd. That's where it comes from. This guy's not racist one bit. Yes, it was wrong of him to say, which he's apologised for, which even I, I say is wrong. It was wrong, 100% wrong. But now he understands it's wrong. But like you live and you learn. One thing that you did pick up on, actually, that I'd seen, dotted about a couple of times on Twitter, was the uh, imagine if O'Hara Davis had said this response. You were sort of used as the British example. You know, we don't need to go through the moments in your career where you said things that have caused controversy. But um, yeah, you were sort of used as the uh, the UK example. Listen, if I said that shit, <laughs> man, I would have been double found under the bus. So I reckon it automatically wins the MTK Golden Conch. <laughs> Listen, if I said that, like I feel like I've been blacklisted. Is that the word? I've been blacklisted. Yeah. Everyone's looking at, everyone's just been on my social media all the time looking at, waiting for me to say one wrong thing. And then I'll get, listen, I'll get fined. I'll get my license taken away. I'll get slaughtered by the fans again. I'll be thrown under the bus. Listen, they're waiting for me to say anything. I, I feel like anything I do, they're going to magnify it. They're going to magnify anything that I do. And I'm not sure why that is. But just because if it was me, I would have got cheated worse than Devin Haney, I believe. I don't wish bad for him. I want him to come out of this. And I want the people to, I like to overlook it, forgive him and allow him to continue his boxing career. I don't I don't want him to get treated how I would, because I'll get treated wrong. I, I don't want to wish that upon anyone. The way that I've been treated, I'm not wishing that upon any other fighter, because I know how it feels. Man, can I, can I just talk about this? So when, when, when was it? Early 2018, before I signed to MTK. I'm thinking, OK, cool. I sent a tweet. What I, got, I got told to tweet this by the people that I was under. The management that I was under told me to tweet this and next thing the whole world's against me and then they want to distance themselves from me and that like they didn't tell me to turn up a certain tweet and then they want to make it act and then it, and then they're trying to make it seem seem like i got dropped when i'm the one that left and they weren't having my back i was getting slaughtered online left right and center and i, I felt alone i wasn't depressed i wasn't depressed but i was very low very sad and no matter how much i try to like, no matter how strong I might come across over social media. At that time, I was weak. I felt alone. You know, I felt like I didn't have anyone. People that acted like they were always going to be there for me, always going to have my back. Like, my coach, manager, promoter. They all distanced themselves from me. And I don't wish that upon any... Upon, I don't wish that upon anyone. So people talk about the Billy Joe Sooner situation, the Devin Haney situation. Listen, I, wish, I don't wish bad upon these guys because I know how it feels. I've noticed this recently, actually, the fact that your Twitter is now much more low-key. You know, you're just engaging in conversation with fans, the same things like, good morning, how are we? Um, obviously, it's blown up recently, but you're sort of just trying to avoid any argument, debate, and just keep it low-key. Yeah, that's why I keep it fairly low-key, because I know that these people are just waiting for me to say anything wrong, anything, even even vaguely wrong, slightly wrong. They're ready to, like, to crucify me. And, you know, that's just, that's just, that's, that's just me. But, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to complain. I'm thankful 
I'm happy with how my boxing career has gone so far. It's not over. But, you know what I mean? You've got to take the bitter and the sweet. You know, a lot of I only have 18 fighters as an amateur. Turn pro started fighting on small horse shows. I got paid £100 for my second fight. How many people that have had under 20 fighters as an amateur turn pro, signed to a small horse promoter, and then done, and then got to where I got to, or has done what I've done? No one. No one. These people either boxed for GB, done some big things, won Commonwealth Games, or they turned pro and they was already signed to someone big time, Frank Brother and Eddie Hearn. So a lot, a, a lot of people that come from where I come from, they're still stuck in the mud trying to find their way. But I've been, I've been, I've been blessed taking the bitter with the sweet. How are you finding making one four seven? Ah, one forty. No, one four seven. You said you want... Oh, Ultra Wait. Fight Fowler. One four seven. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> I could make one four seven easy. I probably one four seven now. I'm probably one fifty now. So I make one four. I make, I, I could make one four seven easily. Do you want to tell us how this started for, for the people who don't know? Oh, with Andy Fowler. Listen, Andy Fowler posted something about, because of what David Haney said, which was wrong, and Andy Fowler then came online and he posted and said, I'll never lose to a black boy that's in ice skates. And he posted a picture of his last fight of him beating up a black guy. And he said, I'll never lose to a black guy that's in ice skates. And I'm thinking, that's wrong of him to say. Why? Because David Haney said what he said. Not f- It wasn't... It wasn't a hateful comment. He said it because of ignorance. Devin Haney is a kid, a young kid. Andy Fowler is a grown man. For a young kid to say, I like to say something that's bang out of order wrong, what Devin Haney said. But then for Andy Fowler as a grown man, like I like to then I like to then come out and say the same thing. That's wrong. That is wrong of him. And I was like, what Devin Haney said is wrong, but what Anthony Fowler said was worse. Because Andy, Andy Fowler is a man he should know better. You shouldn't be out to like, like, like some kid. I'll never lose to someone black. Listen, like, that's wrong of him. If he was 18 years old and he said that, then maybe I could understand it. The guy's fucking 31, 32, 33 years old. How old are you? The guy's a man. The guy's a man. So with Devin Haney, I could say that comes from a place of ignorance. But with Andy Fowler, I could say that's what's really in his heart. And that's what I believe is actually really in his heart. Otherwise, the guy wouldn't say it. I didn't see anyone else coming out and say coming out and trying to use that as an example. Everyone else just came online and said, that's wrong. People come online and they said, that's wrong what he said. Many white guys come online and said, it's wrong. But there was no white guy that said, oh, you know what, I'll never do someone black. Like, it's, it's not playing tit for tat. You're not playing tit for tat. You're trying to call him out on his, on his bullshit. What Devin Haney said, it was some bullshit. But Andy Fowler saying the same thing is even more bullshit. But I said to him, you know what, I, I, I said to him that he's wrong and he don't like being told that he's wrong. That he wants to, like, he's a... Like he's been surrounded by all these people that like to lick his ass and make him feel like he's always in the right, you know, that's not wrong. I'm like, nah, mate, what you said was bang out of order. You're wrong. And that's a racist comment. Why? And he found that, listen, and I can say that because Andy found that he's from one of the race, one of the most racist towns in this country. When I went out there for my conferences, I, I've, I've been getting called black this, black that. I've got DMs on my Instagram. Every day I get DMs from guys from that certain city every single day saying I'm a black monkey. I need to be eating bananas. I should go back home to Africa. I shouldn't be here. I'm a black cunt. They inbox me this every day. People from that same city. So especially when you're from that certain town and then you're going to make a joke like that. Listen, I'm taking that shit seriously. I'm taking that shit seriously. If you was from London, then it's a bit different because London's not as racist as it is up there. So when you're from up there and you try to make a joke, mate, that shit ain't no joke. That ain't no joke. So I said to him, mate, I'll come up and wait. If you want to come down and wait, I'll knock you out. I'll be the first black guy to knock you out. Straight up. And 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 that offer still stands now. It still stands now to this day. I mean, this back and forth did go on for quite a while, actually. Uh, you shone light on some tweets that he allegedly made a few years ago. And... um also on his extracurricular activities as a salesman, should we say. Um, but prior to all of this, what were your actual thoughts and feelings towards Anthony? Before this, I didn't, I, I didn't really mind him because I had seen him up at Sheffield. I've, I've trained alongside him. So so just as well as I know Devin Haney, I know Andy Fowler. I've been around them both. I've seen Andy Fowler many times. We've trained together. We like we have chats after training um, up in GB when I have to go there and go and spar. Obviously, look, we don't know how Anthony feels about this. You might want to stay well clear. But um, post-golden contract for you, this is actually becoming a real possibility. 
hundred percent. As soon as I knock out Tyrone McKenna, I will take Annie Fowler next fight. I will take Annie Fowler next fight. I'm not off the stand. And also, I said to him, I'll go up to his hometown up in Liverpool, and I will do him there. The same way I knocked out Truman. That's where he's from, Liverpool. The first scouser that I knocked out, David Matthews. Second scouser that I knocked out, Tom Farrell. The third scouser that I knocked out in his own backyard. And if I can easily be number four. And I'll pick number five or number six. Tell me how many boxes they got there. I'll take them all out. I'm sure the people of Liverpool can't wait, OD. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, though, this must have annoyed you in some way or another because you didn't have to get involved in the conversation and you did. It really got on my nerves what you've done. And he's online tweeting about all this CBD oil. Like, it's wrong what he done as well because he got a picture of a... Dis- I mean, it was, like a, it was like a video clip of a disabled kid, disabled kid, getting um, getting treatment. And, and that treatment wasn't CBD oil. It was a... It, it was a... It was a cannabis oil that could only be... That can only be got from... From the pharmacy or from the NHS. You can't buy it in stores. You can't buy it from... From no guy that's got CBD, and then he posted this saying, "Ah, oh, you know what? This is what my CBD oil done." I'm like, "You're liar. That's not your CBD oil." Because then the kids of that parent, I mean, and like the parent of of that kid came out and said, "Listen, take it down because you're lying. Take it down. It's wrong. Like he's doing all of this in in the name of trying to sell CBD oil, which is bullshit. Can I sell his shit? It's bullshit. It's wrong what he does." Trying to exploit people, trying to say this thing works for me, work for that. It didn't work for him in a Scott Fitzgerald fight. He still got his ass up. I don't care how much oil he took. Scott Fitzgerald walked right through him. Listen, I see Andy Fowler backstage on up on Sky Sports taking CBD oil backstage before the fight, trying to sell his shit. And Scott Fitzgerald ruined the party. I, I, and that and that Scott Fitzgerald ain't taking no CBD oil. Listen, I'm listen. I'm trying to find out what's and like what he takes. I'm trying to find out Scott Fitzgerald, and I'm trying to find out what CBD oil he takes, if he takes anything. I'm not trying to find what Andy Fowler takes, because that's what got his ass whooped. Beat a bunch of journeymen. That's what he's done. He's, 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 like he's, beat, a bunch of, like he's beat a bunch of journeymen. He's only got a name because his uncle was, was, a, was a football player. What's his name? Robbie Fowler. Robbie Fowler, yeah. That's how he got into the Olympics. That's how he's got a name. That's how he got followers. If his uncle was on a football player, and Fowler would be just like any of these other guys on small horse shows. Guys got no talent, no skill. And Scott Fisher would walk right through him. Scott Fisher would, is the man. He's the guy. He's he's the next fucking world champion. And he showed Anthony Fowler. Dominated him. All right, OD. I'm going to wrap it up here because obviously I know you've got to shoot to go and train. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes over the next couple of days, actually. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, OD. I'll speak to you soon. That's okay, bro.